Welcome back to Guns and Gear Network everyone. Appreciate you tuning in. Today we're going to take a look at a heavy duty off-grid sewing machine. Stay tuned. Welcome back guys. Appreciate you tuning in. So today we're going to take a look at this uh, really cool off-grid a sewing machine that I picked up. I had a birthday recently and a family member asked what they could buy me and um, I've, you know, it's one of those deals where I just couldn't think of anything but I used to do a lot of leather work back in the past and um, decided, I'd, me and my son had kind of got back into the hobby and he started making some things. I started showing him how to make things but I've never owned a sewing machine. I've used them. Um, used to work with a leather uh, shop and did some leather work uh, for them and things and they had uh, sewing machines I didn't I've never owned one and during my research um, and just uh, the survival prepping lifestyle these sewing machines have come up in the past in my searches and I thought I'll get one um, they're really uh, inexpensive they're a great price point you're looking at about a hundred 120 bucks depending on the vendor uh, I will have in the section below down there if you take a look uh, in my Amazon affiliate store, I will have the one listed that I purchased, which is this one. And um, you can take a look and uh, see if you want one. But here's the thing I will say. if um, Let's talk prepping and survival real quick, and we'll kind of get into the sewing machine itself. Uh, because there's a lot of videos about this sewing machine with a lot of knowledge and things out there. So this is kind of just um, an overview of the sewing machine and my thoughts on even owning one. So... Back, you know, I look at history, right? So I look at kind of our evolution of where we're at today and uh, when things were uh, not as modern. If you go back in history, look at like the early 1800s and things when a lot of things were made of leather and skin and heavy duty fabrics and things like that. Today we live in a throwaway society. So that's why it's even hard to go to a town and really find a, an old fashioned cobbler or a shoe repair place, right? So if we ever have uh, an extensive long-term grid down situation in the U.S., people that know how to do certain things, such as leather repair, making things out of leather, uh, whatever, well, you know, uh, people that do blacksmith work, people that know how to shoe horses, all those things are going to kind of come back into play and people are going to be needing things especially repair work. So today we live in a throwaway society. People buy a pair of nice, decent leather shoes, maybe pay 7,500 bucks. If they uh, wear them out, they throw them away and buy a new pair. Whereas years ago, that very rarely happened. You always had your shoes repaired. Um, and when I was growing up, uh, we had our shoes repaired at a local, you know, we'd have them new soles put on, right? So this machine here is a Chinese machine and um, it uh, is imported in and it is rudimentary at best it is very crude and the fit and finish is pretty terrible to be honest with you but it's it, you can make it work and the price point on it is so good that i think overall it'll be great i hadn't had a chance to do a lot with it i just now finished it up today as far as what i wanted to do with it i will get into maybe doing some more videos on some actual projects and showing you how it works but again the reason i'm not doing that today um, is because I've seen all the videos they're out there if you want to research them just do a, a search of Chinese um, shoe repair machine or Chinese leather machine uh, there all the videos will come up you'll see this particular design here so there's a few things that you're going to want to do when you get yours and I'm gonna take this off the tripod here in a second because it's gonna be a little shaky I apologize so remember I mentioned earlier that this thing the fit and finish and all that is pretty crude and there's a lot of rough edges and things like that. So what I did was, you're going to need a drill, some of these, some sandpaper, some basic files, things like that, to get this thing where it's at least usable. And if you look, I have it mounted here on a wooden base. This did not come with it. I made all this, and we'll discuss that here in a minute. That came from Lowe's. So when you get it, it's going to come with this odd-looking tripod thing. And uh, it is... Pretty bad, to be honest with you. Could you make it work? Yeah, probably so, but I did not want to do that. Most people, if you watch all those videos around, you will see that most people figure out some kind of base system. And the bases I seen on YouTube, uh, some of them were shaky when they were trying to use them. And this one uh, works pretty good for me, and I'll show you that here in a minute and how I did it. But everything that I used to make the base came from Lowe's. So let's look at the machine real quick. 
A few things I'll go over real quick that you're going to need. You're going to need some oil to oil all the points. And uh, there's a few things that I did to kind of make it better. So one of the first things I did, there's a little notch here. This is how you get to your bobbin. And you have to be able to lift this plate up and off of there to get this to, oh, sorry, my needle's down. Um, let me get my needle up and get my walking foot up. Sorry, guys. Um, this plate comes up like this, and there's a little groove right here you need to be able to access. I made that a little bigger and a little smoother. Just used a Dremel to do that. Then you pull it over here, and that's how you access your bobbin. Your bobbins go in there. Uh, they'll give you a pack of bobbins and things like that. Uh, these were pretty bad. You need to clean these up. Again, I used a Dremel and some different attachments to clean them all up. They're kind of gruddy, cruddy, nasty, uh, whatever. There was um, sharp edges kind of all over this thing. So I took part of it apart. There's some videos of how to take it apart and how to put it back together. So like this rod here was all grungy and, and messed up and the way it was, uh, I don't know, it was all rough and edged right here and I took all that off, smoothed it off best I could um, and so forth. This right here is called a walking foot. So it actually walks your leather or your project, whatever you're sewing, it, forward or backwards, depends on which way you have this turned. Um, and you'll need to, the bottom has like little teeth. They're pretty rough when you get it. You'll need to file those down a little smoother. So I did that. There's a little hole right here for um, where your needle, I'm sorry, where your thread goes through that people seem to think that they need to make that bigger. And the reason is, is because once you pull this plate up and you move it, um, most people are moving it away from, so they're pushing it like this. And when they do, it comes across that little piece of thread that you're going to pull down through. And sometimes I think it was cutting it. And so they made that little a little deeper. I did too, but I figured out an easier solution, I think. Um, instead of going that direction with this, just pull it off and then push it, pull it towards you uh, like this. And you never have to cross over this uh, with any uh, where the thread would possibly break. So I'm going to try that when I get it all up and running and all that. And we'll see. So get you uh, this right here. Um, I'll show you this. I put a uh, washer here and I put a washer there. This right here was just up against this frame. And so I put a washer there to let to uh, have less friction. And I may actually put one between this piece and the frame also, because uh, if you look, I'll show you. Let's see, this piece here moves up and down. And this one moves just a little, not as much as this one though. So it's a cam system, it is hand driven. So uh, this handle here was a little rough. I made a little adjustment on it as far as smoothing it out. And I put a lock washer here for this cam system so you simply just turn it and if you look the foot moves and the needle goes up and down there this right here is this handle here is to lift your um, uh, foot up and then also this is to move these two tabs there's a tab here and a tab on the back side this is to move your foot so if you want to change the direction of which way the foot is walking these are here had some rough edges also smoothed all that and so you can move it all the way around like that so it's 365 degree movement so you don't have to move your project you just move the foot a different direction you want to go so that's the cool thing about this, and it has this long neck here, and it's thin, so you can get things like shoes. That's exactly what this is called. It is a shoe patch machine. So that was uh, the whole design of this thing, why they did it. It has a little bobbin winder here. You uh, attach your bobbin here, and then you use the crank, and it spins it, and then you put the thread onto your bobbin. So that's what that's for. This right here is for your... Um, to put your thread on i'll show you that it did come with this little cheap nylon looking thread i also suggest buying more needles and research the needle thing uh, i'm still in the process of doing that uh, as far as researching what i'll need these are a size 110 slash 18. i'm going to go to i think it's uh 110 slash 20 maybe it's a little heavier duty i don't know i'm researching all the needles what i'll need for this and there are certain ones that fit but they are fairly universal i think this is kind of a knockoff of a singer uh sewing machine not exactly sure which one
Uh, again, some oil and also possibly some lithium grease in some areas would be uh, helpful to keep this thing running real smooth. Because it is hand operated, you want everything kind of greased and smooth so as you're doing it, you don't have to put a lot of effort into it. And if you look, if I can, let me uh, pull this back just a little bit, the camera. And if you look, everything's nice and steady with this platform. So what this is, and I'll get a tape measure real quick, guys. So I bought this. This is uh, kind of a, uh, I guess, tongue and grooves pine board that I got at Lowe's. And that's what I used as the base. And it was not overly expensive. Let me see here. I'm trying to... So it's uh, 16 inches wide. And it is, I think, 36 inches long. Yeah. 30, 38 inches long, 36 inches long. And then I bought some short pieces of two by four. Um, I had some around the house that, had, that was weathered and things. Uh, so I just bought, they sell these in short pieces. I think they're three foot pieces maybe, uh, two by fours. And I doubled that up for the base here and uh, just bolted it all the way through using some big fender washers on the bottom. And I also bought, if I can pull this up real quick for you guys, I'll show you this too, if I can get it up. I also bought these little rubber feet here. That uh, keeps it from sliding around on a table. I bought those at Lowe's also, and then I just, they're sticky, but I knew the sticky wasn't gonna stay on there good, so I just ran a little screw in the center of it to hold it into place. But that also keeps it up off the table a little bit and keeps it uh, from sliding around. But it's a really cool little machine, and I think uh, for off-grid use, something like this would be handy to have to make repairs around you know, your house or whatever and um, be able to make projects. You know, Again, you can, if you look here, there's a big box of um, scrap leather. There's a box of scrap leather. If you look around long enough in your town, I promise you somebody's using the leather that they got scraps. Could be an upholstery shop, could be a craft person making pocketbooks. That came from a craft lady that makes pocketbooks. That's all her scraps that she just gave me. Uh, some of it I would not use as far as, but if you're in a, you know, a need situation, all leather is gonna work. So there's, I wouldn't use that pattern to make a, you know, a nice knife holster, right? But if I need to make something, a repair or whatever, I at least got some leather. And you don't have to spend a lot of money uh, to do that when they're giving it to you free. Uh, again, there's a bin full of it. So that's what I would do. Um, you know, and then if you want to buy some leather too, you could do that. And then um, you could uh, have a nice little sewing setup and just practice with it. And uh, you, know, you should be able to at least make repairs and be able to make some projects, uh, whether it be a knife sheath, gun holsters, whatever the case, you know, tool case, something that uh, might come in handy or needed. And especially uh, if we go back to using horses more, uh, repairing saddles and tack. Uh, that's something that uh, would be in need. And it's believe it or not, it's in need today uh, because a lot of these places that I've seen have closed up. So there's no more, hardly any saddle repair places. There's a handful around you'll see every once in a while. But it's really hard to get those type things repaired. People now are just having to, really no option but other than to throw it away and buy something else, uh, which is a shame. So anyway, guys, I hope this was helpful. If you got any questions, you can post those below. If you got any experience uh, with this machine or something and you want to comment on it, uh, feel free to do that. But again, I'll have a uh, link in the section below if you want to buy you one. I think it will be uh, a good little investment for you. And uh, you can even start a little side business. This right here is also, I, I was told, that's good for putting patches. Like if you want to work the bike rallies, this is real good for putting patches on like a uh, vest and things like that so it's kind of cool that way also if you want to start your little side business you could do it pretty cheap but anyway guys appreciate you tuning in if you got any questions post those below and as always like share and subscribe bring another video shortly have a great day